Well, I think we've set our final four junior master chefs a huge challenge. Not only do they have to create a beautiful dish using snails, beetroot and rocket, but they also have to cook for the three of you culinary legends, which is enough to put the fear of God into me, let alone into a 12, 11 or 9-year-old. I'm walking into the restaurant for Matt Preston and the guest judges to taste my dish. This is one of the most important results yet because it takes the winner straight through to the grand finale. Sophia, that's a very impressive looking dish. What is it? I've made a snail and rocket fritelli stack with battered snails and a beetroot puree. Beautiful. Now, do you think this dish is the dish that's going to get you straight into the grand finale? I really hope it is. Um, I'm not really sure because everyone else is, um, they're all such great cooks as well. Um, but I, I really hope I can get through. Thanks, Sophia. We're going to taste your dish now, so we'll see you a bit later. Well, it certainly looks interesting. I wasn't expecting this at all. But she's done a really fantastic job of incorporating all the elements. I'm really surprised. Mm. Donna, do your plating wonders. done a great job on the rocket fratelli. It's got a lovely freshness to it with the rocket. The snail I'm not so keen on, quite, it's quite doughy. You know, I, I love the beetroot puree. To me, it had perfect balance, you know, great acidity and it, really well seasoned. And, you know, it, it goes really well with the, the rocket salad and with the, with the fritter. You know, it's certainly a brave dish and great technique on there, but we can't really tell whether this is a good enough dish to get us straight into the grand finale unless we see the other dishes. So let's get the next dish in. It's a bit scary cooking things for important judges because they're all really good cooks and they know straight away when they've tasted your food what's gone wrong. So, Sienna, what have you brought us? Today I've made a snail and chorizo risotto with mushroom foam and a beetroot salad. What did you find the most challenging today? The snails. I've never cooked with them. So is there a possible chance that they might be overcooked? Um, there may be a possible chance because I cooked them and then I cooked them with the trits, so, so um, I don't know. <laughs> did you taste? Did you taste it all while you were cooking? All I tasted was the risotto to make sure it's not crunchy or it's overcooked. So I hope, hopefully it will be all right. Thank you, Sienna. We're now going to taste your dish. Thank you. You know, I have to say, it, it doesn't look that appealing. You know, to have that sort of liquid substance around it, it reminds me of, uh, you know, my, my grandmother's rice pudding with cream around the, around the side of it. And I think that, rather than that being kind of um, liquid that's oozed out of the risotto, that looks like, like a mushroom foam that hasn't actually foamed. Well, let's just hope that it, uh, it tastes a lot better than what it looks in, man. Mm. Now, you don't want to miss out on one of those snails, so let me just... Thank you, Donna. ...put that down first. For us, first impressions were deceiving on this occasion. The risotto, really well cooked, and obviously Sienna's kind of uh, angst about the snails has been well hidden by the treats. So, great combination in there. How was your snail? Mm, mine was overcooked. Really? Yeah. Mine was still really juicy, I yeah, want to mine, say. Yeah, mine, Was it? Yeah. Maybe yeah. I just got the odd one. For me, the salad could be better picked, and I, you know what it feels like? It feels like at the last moment she went, oh, the salad, and she just grabbed a handful of leaves, and then she's thrown a little bit of the beetroot on, and she's forgot to put the dressing on. And I think that's, that's a pity, because with a, with a nice dressing, a nice sweet dressing on that, that would have really brought together the salad with the risotto. Right, let's see the next dish. 
As I'm walking through the restaurant towards the judges, I'm feeling a little bit nervous because this would mean so much to me to make it into that finals. And the food heroes, for them to love my dish would be fantastic, would just be a real dream. Wow, Isabella, what a feast you brought us. Now, tell me what exactly is on that plate? Um, this is my nonna's spaghetti with a snail sugo, and I've also got a beetroot and rocket salad. It's a freshly made tomato sauce. And then you've made your pasta as well? I have, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Isabella. You can go now. We're going to taste your dish. Thank you. Beautiful use of the, the Donna Hay pasta twirl there <laughs> in the middle. I'm glad you mention proud. that, Matt. So if you kind of look, look at that there now, you know, that, that tomato sauce is very deep, rich. It kind of looks as though it's not cooked enough. So I'm worried whether it's got a lot more acidity in it than, than it should. Let's you know find out. I think we should. Was, was fantastic. She's definitely got skills. I mean, she's very impressive. You'd love to come home at night and have your kid make pasta oh. like that for you. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I'd give up cooking. <laughs> and the tomato sauce, you know, I'd, I'd take it back. It, it actually does have lots of flavour, nice acidity, and, you know, it's, it's cooked out. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful dish. But a real challenge in terms of how the salad relates to the... Yeah. <laughs> the salad, the salad I, I just don't get it. To me, it's, it's overpowered by the fennel. Mm. Um, you don't really get that sort of beetroot flavour through it. Now, if it had just been a snail challenge, and if that bowl had come up by itself, yep. I would suggest that Isabella would be straight through to grand finale yep. without any debate. The okay. question is whether that salad holds up her chances of grabbing that first spot. Well, I'm walking into the judges and they're about to taste my food, and I'm a bit nervous knowing that it's make or break today. Jack, we know you're a fan of Heston Blumenthal. Tell us what this dish is. I think I suspect I know what it is. Well, I've done Heston's snail porridge, but I've kind of shortened it down a bit and made it a bit faster. So now tell me how you've incorporated the beetroot, the rocket, and also the snails. Well, in the snail porridge, it, in the original one, it uses a parsley butter. I'm using a rocket butter. And for the beetroot, I'm using a beetroot twill. How have you done that? Well, basically it's just beetroot and icing sugar blitzed up together, and then you just bake it for an hour, and then it kind of makes like a biscuit. Beautiful. Jack, just before you go, mate, just come here, pick up, pick up your dish. Pick up your dish. I'm going to send that to Heston. I think that's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jack, now you've had your photo moment, off you go. Thank you. I am so surprised. This looks so elegant, so polished. I'm, I'm quite blown away. Mm, he's really sort of thought about it. Fair enough, he's probably ripped it off Heston, but, you know, God, they all had the opportunity to do something, didn't they? Yeah. Mm. There's complexity there There's yep. and a level of skill. Um, I, you see, I, I'm, I'm going to pull you up on that, ripped it off. The whole idea about modern chefs is they share their techniques and their ideas <laughs> and they look for people to move them on, to take them forward. And what, what Jack's done, he hasn't just knocked off the parsley butter. I love the idea he's used rocket. He's used rocket butter, yeah. You know, and, yeah and, and, and I like the, and the idea of the beetroot chill. He's clever. That's certainly not out of a Heston book. I'm interested in the beetroot twill, you know, especially with having icing sugar in it and whether it's... Too sweet? Too sweet. Let's see if it's too sweet. Does the beetroot twill throw the whole dish out of balance? Matt Moran, it'll come down to you to decide. <laughs> Wow, it's really blown me away. 
That's a mouthful of flavour. It is a, a mouthful. It, it just explodes in your mouth. Yeah.